Hi, this is Dennis Moore, and I just uh, wanted to do a video, a short video, on uh, some issues I had uh, with my tracker. Uh, this is a Sun Tracker Party Deck 21. Uh, it's got a, a Mercruiser 4.3 uh, Alpha 1 Gen 2 in it, and uh, I had a uh, U-joint boot failure um, that I want to tell you about, and I developed a little tool, quick time to fix it, that I want to demonstrate and show you to show you. Um, um, I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos, and be honest with you, I wouldn't have even tackled this job if it wasn't for all the YouTube videos that are out there, because it's way beyond what I can do. But uh, we took this boat out. Uh, this is uh, 2020, uh, the year of COVID, uh, and uh, we took this out Labor Day weekend and uh, me and my son-in-law, and we took on uh, uh, a minimum of 50 gallons up to 100 gallons of water in, in this. And we found it by when we started to leave that day, we were out 12 hours on the water, running the engine all the time, trolling for uh, catching fish. And uh, anyway, when we went to store some stuff in the middle storage area, it had a couple inches of water in it up in the uh, middle of the boat. And uh, we drained the water out, and we knew we had a serious problem and was trying to, we had, uh, we had hit the hole that day. Uh, didn't think that was it, but had to verify that. And I've been concerned of a bunch of things because we've all, we've had a leak for a while, but it got really, really bad that particular day. Uh, uh, so anyway, I wanted to show you the culprit. Uh, we did find it by uh, putting the, actually we checked the hole out and it was fine. Uh, we checked fittings, uh, uh, checked live well, looked for places for it to leak and, and looked for, I had just got through replacing a, 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 a thermostat, making sure there wasn't any engine leaks and there wasn't until we run it a long time. And we just decided, well, we'll park it on a hill and fill it up full of water. And the water came out the, uh, the uh, U-joint bellows and we knew that was it. Let me show you the problem. Here's the U-joint bellows that I took off. It's cracked, old, it is abused. I bought this boat new in 2000, so this is my problem, my mistake, uh, for not knowing that this should have been inspected. Uh, uh, this is a, a bellows rubber. It's probably about a 16 inch thick at the thinnest area. And that's all it is between uh, the, you and the boat sinking, that and a couple clamps that are on the end. Any one of those fail and you can get water in your boat and, and, and sink it uh, because we got a whole lot of water in the boat that way. So that was the problem and we went to, to replace this. I had some issues replacing it and I wanted to make a video on it. Come here. You come take a look at this, uh, this seal. I had trouble. This seal was wore out. Here's the old seal. The old seal, you probably can't see it, but it's a little thinner at the bottom than it is at the top. It was wore out, so I had a, a grease seal that's in front of the bearing, uh, the gimbal bearing. This is where the gimbal bearing goes in the Alpha 1 Gen 2, and you can see the new seal up there. I had trouble putting that seal in, uh, and I just wanted to say that uh, I put that seal in the freezer for about 45 minutes or so because uh, I couldn't get it to pound in. It was I noticed it was a tad bigger than this seal. Uh, but I couldn't get it pound in with the tool. But when I shrunk it in the freezer, it went on in, uh, a little bit of grease on it, and it went on in and no trouble at all. Uh, so I wanted to, to tell you that I did that. Uh, next thing is taking this apart, and there's kind of a long story here. You see that this is a new oil line. I haven't cut it to, to length yet. It's got a plug in it. <laughs> this plug was, I found out, it, it, this this has been to the shop twice. Uh, uh, one of the when it was brand new, six months old, a gimbal bearing had failed. <laughs> it's still under warranty, and it turns out they didn't have the engine to line right, and the gimbal bearing failed hard. And if you look in here, you probably see some damage from that original gimbal failure, where they just left it. And I think the housing is still okay. Well, we will see. But anyway. Uh, that time it was in the shop and that was at the dealership where I bought it. And then about a year later, it was still, the hole was still under warranty, may have been two years. I had a crack in the hole. Uh, one of these wells had failed and it was leaking water out of it. 
uh, when we pulled it out of the water one time. So that went all the way back to St. Louis that time. That's where the tracker, that's where they build the tracker boats. And they cut that transom out and rerouted uh, the same transom back in, I assume. Uh, uh, but they may have got into this area at this time. I'm not sure. But when, when I took this apart, I had noticed that uh, uh, when it was new, it would always use a little drive oil. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, I assumed the, the seals just quit leaking. But what, uh, what had happened, some either the first time I took it in or the second time I took it in, they must have broke uh, uh, this fitting that was up here because I found it broken. And they just took the line out and took the part out, uh, the little valve out that feeds water to the, feeds uh, oil to the foot. They took it out and, and uh, uh, just left it. And put a plug in that plug that I showed you here. That's the same plug that was the plug underneath the in the line underneath the oil reservoir. The problem with all that is they never told me about it. So uh, um, the oil level never went down. I assumed that was fine, and then I wasn't getting oil to the foot, and I don't even know how much oil is in there. May have damaged it. I don't really know. I guess they assume you you service it every so often, and 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 it would get enough oil in it, but. Uh, I, I would have been appreciated if they had told me that. Plus, they removed that that valve that's about 90 bucks if you buy one today, and uh, they didn't give that back to me, and they didn't tell me about this. And I didn't know it until I did this bearing thing. But the, all this 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 was uh, this was gone. That plug was in the line, and if you see, it still got the plug that they put back here. That's supposed to be a fitting where I've got my finger. That's supposed to be a fitting uh, for an oil line that's still got the plug that I haven't taken out yet. So that's one of the problems that I've ran into. Uh, the, the wires on the sending unit and the, uh, uh, the trim unit, the trim unit, trim sending unit and the trim uh, uh, cutoff, both those wires were bad. So I decided to replace that in, in, in doing this. And reading a lot of videos, uh, looking at a lot of videos, and, and watching some of the problems people have had, uh, um, I, I uh, watch them develop a tool. Uh, uh, they make a tool. They make a a bearing uh, stretcher, not, uh, a bellows stretcher tool uh, that you can buy. Uh, what my, one of my problems here is I'm in a time crunch that we are right before vacation, wanting to take this boat down to. Uh, Florida, uh, we're in Tennessee, wanting to take it to Florida uh, the first week in October. And here we are at just past Labor Day weekend. I got this problem, and that's why I, I have to take it on myself if it's got a chance of being fixed and we got a chance of doing some quality fishing in our own boat. So that's the reason I'm taking it on myself. Normally, I would have hired somebody to do this, uh, uh, but I do like doing myself, doing things myself. And plus, some of the issues you get into, they don't tell you about when they go wrong. So I, I got more confidence in myself doing things. But this is well beyond anything I've ever tried to do. But uh, anyway, uh, I won't show you uh, putting this this uh, U joint bellows on. But uh, some of the problem folks have is with this exhaust bellows getting it on once it's on there. And I just want to demonstrate this tool. I saw on a YouTube video that they did a threaded rod with about a one inch washer. This is a 3 8 threaded rod. This happens to be stainless, some I hadn't had around the house. And they put a washer with two nuts on it to help pull that, uh, that bellows onto the joint. And I just wanted to, I, I thought I could improve on that tool, and that's what I've done. And the way I did that is I made two rods instead of just one. That's two 3 8 rods with two other uh, washers on it. And then I got a piece that happens to be eighth inch thick uh, bar aluminum is all. And that's a, a little over a 3 8 or 3 8 water out hole is what it is. And the reason there's two, there's three holes in there is that if you use the out, and those holes are about an inch apart. And if you use the outside holes, that works good for the the, the gimbal bearing. That's that's about the that that's the right size for the U joint bearing and pulling it over because it'll be on here and you, you can't hardly get to it and reach in there in that hole and, and pull it out uh, through here. But but I wanted to show you on this uh, bell housing uh, using this tool. Uh, this area is the area that will be would be exposed and I got it in the close holes of the tool so it's set up for the, the bell housing one and and this this will go on uh, either side of this and back here this this can slide and be adjustable as required 
okay? If you put them a, a, about the same length, you're gonna grab the uh, bellows. This is the exhaust bellows. Stick it in there and spread them apart to where it grabs it. And then you can just, uh, of course you won't have your hand back there, but you can just work it on. And you can uh, slide this back a little further. The further you, you slide it back, the further you slide this back, the further these will stretch out. So you get more stretching on it and you can pull that on. You can see that it, it didn't, it didn't work it again. Pull it, go in a little further, pull back and you can pull this just all the way on and tighten that joint up. So you can see that I got it in place, ready for this to be uh, uh, put on. The sequence of this would be, of course, you would put this bellows on. Uh, uh, you put the water hose on first, okay? And then um, I would put probably the steering uh, cable bellows on next. And then uh, I would put this bellows on, and, and we're talking about on the transom housing. And then I would put this uh, U-joint bellows on. <clears throat> and then, then you're put, attaching it to the bell housing. And then uh, uh, on the bell housing, you got, to, uh, you got to attach, of course, your water hose and your oil line. And then uh, uh, um, you're going to attach the U-joint bellows. Uh, with some tool, or I may be able, my hand's small enough, I may be able to reach in there on the U-joint bellows and actually pull that up. You'll be using the uh, bellows adhesive on it. Uh, uh, um, but this particular one here, when you build it up, you're going to need some tool or something to get it on because it is very hard to get with. Uh, hope this helps. Uh, it would have helped me if I'd have seen a video like this. So uh, 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 that's the reason I give it to you. Thank you.